Our MERNSTAC project is ready to deploy. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we will deploy both the front end and back end code for our MERNSTAC project. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Our MERNSTAC project is essentially complete and we're ready to deploy both the front end and back end code repositories. There's just a few setting changes that we need to make first, and we're going to start in the front end code base, and that is from lesson 12, at least our starter code. So let's just change to lesson 13 here in the package JSON and we can save that change, but we need to add one more dependency. And I know you think this is fairly late in the game to do that, but you'll see why we're doing this one. Let's type npm i, and then we need the at symbol, and then f vilers slash disable dash react dash dev tools. And this dependency will do exactly what the name says. We're going to disable react dev tools for our deployment. Okay, now that we have added that, and I'll close the terminal, you can see we've got that new dependency right here. Now we're going to apply that in the index.js. So let's open up the source directory and go to the index.js file. I'll get rid of this extra line we have here between the imports. I'm going to add this extra import here. This is import, and then it is disable React DevTools, and you can see it comes from at fviler slash disable React DevTools. Once we have that, we can put it into place. It doesn't go inside of the render, it can actually go above. We'll type if process.env.nodeenv, and then we'll say equals, with three equal signs, production, so this only happens in production mode. Then we will disable React DevTools. So we just call that right there. And that's all we need to do to implement that. But this will disable React DevTools in our production mode when we have deployed our application. So now to go with that change, let's go to the app directory, and then we'll go to the store.js. And this is for Redux. And notice we have DevTools set to true here. Let's just change that to false inside of our store.js. And now this disables Redux DevTools. And finally, let's go inside the API directory to the API slice, and we need to change our base URL value. You can see we still have it set to localhost port 3500. Well, this is going to be HTTPS now, and we're going to host our application on render.com. And I can already just put in what the API address will be. So we're going to call it technotes-api, and then it will be at .onrender.com. And after that change, we are ready to deploy. The first step in deploying our code will be ensuring that it is on GitHub, and we need to do that with Git. So we're going to initialize a repository. If you already have a code repository, by the way, with Git and GitHub that you're doing with this project, you could skip this part, but I'm going to quickly show how I push the code to GitHub. So we'll have git init, and after we initialize a repository, I'm just going to add all of the code with git add and a period, or dot. We've added all the code now, so let's commit this. So we'll say git commit and dash m for message, and we'll just say ready to deploy. And after that, we need to have a repository on GitHub to push our code to. So let's go to GitHub, let's create a new repository, and we'll just call this repository Tech Notes. And we'll scroll down and click Create Repository. After that, we get a page that tells us what we need to do to push the code. And we have an existing repository on our computer, so we can do this from the command line. We need these three lines. I can just click the little icon over here to copy all three. We can go back to VS Code now. And in VS Code, I'm going to expand this so we can see more of the terminal. And if I right click, it will paste all three in, and I'll just press enter, and we are pushing our code to GitHub, and it should now be there. So we can go back to GitHub, and I'll scroll up, and I'll click on Tech Notes, and here's our code. So it is now in my GitHub account. And then I can go to render.com, and that's where we're going to deploy our code. And now what I need to do 
is create an account if I don't have one. Now I already have, so I have a dashboard link here that's just ready to go. But you need to create a free account. It does not ask for any payment information. And that's one thing I like about this for students. You can just set up a free account without having to provide a credit card or anything like that. And after you do, you may have to confirm your email address. You may want to pause the video and do all of that to get your account set up. But then you should have access to a dashboard. So I click dashboard and I don't have anything deployed here yet. So now I have options, static sites and web services. We're going to do one of each today. Our React app is a static site. So I'm going to click new static site and it says connect a repository. So one thing you'll do when you set up your account is connect your render.com account to GitHub. And you can see mine's already connected over here. So you wanna make sure you do that. After you connect GitHub to render, and you could probably log in with that if I remember right, but double check that. Either way, once you have your GitHub connected, you can see your repositories here and you can see tech notes from my GitHub account is right here. So I just wanna click connect. Now I'm connecting the repository and now I need to put in a name here. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'll call it tech notes. And then it has a few other questions. I'm using the main branch of my code repository. Now here's where we need to put in the build command and render.com defaults to yarn. If you use yarn, you're probably already set up. But since I'm using NPM, there's a change or two we need to make here. So instead of yarn build, it's going to be NPM run build. And that goes along with the scripts in our package JSON. And after that, it says the publish directory. Well, that is the build directory for a React app, I believe. So we can just leave that where it is. And we're pretty much ready to go. I'll scroll down and we click create static site. Now this will start to show us how it builds the site. And this takes just a little while. So once it gets going, it shows in progress here. And you can watch everything that's happening here on the server. And this will take a while. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and jump to the end, but you can set and watch the entire thing for your application if you want to. Okay, I'm back and you can see it says your site is live and it did take a few minutes compared to where we were. And that's okay, even after it says your site is live, you might give it just a little bit of time and that's fine. But let's scroll the window back up and it gives us our URL right here, which is technotes.onrender.com. And we can copy it, or I could just right click and open in a new tab. Once we do that, we've got our Dandy Repairs web page. And the whole app is not going to work, just the public pages will for now. We haven't even deployed the back end. So we can see this, we can go to the login, at least look at the page. So it is deployed, it's just not going to work yet. Now we need to make a few settings changes to the back end code and deploy it. Now I've got the back end code base open and I'm of course, I have the lesson 12 code once again, so let's just change this to lesson 13 and save that file. But now let's jump to our allowed origins. And if I remember right, that's in the config directory. And there we go, alloweds.js. We wanna make some changes here. Now, if Dan D, our stakeholder, had a URL like the dandrepairshop.com, of course, that's what we would use. And it would probably have the three W's and then not have the three W's as well. So we would want to provide both of those if it was available both ways. However, that's not what we have today. What we have was our tech notes, then dot on render dot com. So we'll go ahead and remove the dandy repair shop URL. And we can also remove local host. We do not want anybody else to be able to access this application from the local host dev environment on their computer. So we'll also save that. Now our allowed origins is really just one origin for this deployment. After that, let's look at the core's options. And this is a decision that needs to be made here. And do you want to leave the origin in, or essentially if it does not have an origin is what I should say, 
it, do you want to leave that in or not? Because that will leave it accessible to an application like Postman, something that's running from the desktop that does not have an origin URL. So you need to make that decision whether you want that in there or not. For today, for me, I'm just going to leave this in here, but you might want to remove it for deployment, especially if you were doing this for a customer. Okay, after that, the only other thing I want to highlight is we do have the .env file that should not be pushed to GitHub. You do never you never want to share your environment variables on GitHub. So that should be listed in your git ignore file. .env should definitely be in a .git ignore file before we do anything about pushing the code to GitHub. Okay, now that I've gone over that, let's go ahead and open up a terminal window again and I'm going to initialize a git repository. So git init and once we have that initialized, I'll git add and dot just to add all of the code and then git commit dash m. And here I'm going to say ready to deploy back end. And now that I've committed all of the code, we're ready to go back to GitHub in our browser. So let's do that. And we're here at the tech notes repository. Now let's create another new repository for the back end code. So I can go to my repositories and there it has the new button as well. So I'll create a new one and I'm going to call this technotes-api. And now that that repository name is available, we'll scroll down and create that repository. It shouldn't take long. We once again get the code that we need to run from the command line to push our code to GitHub. So I'm going to copy that, go back to VS Code, and in VS Code, I'm going to expand the terminal just so I can see everything. And when I right click, it puts all three lines here inside of the terminal. I just need to press Enter once, and it's going to push my code to GitHub. And it should be complete. We'll go back to Chrome, and let's see if we have the code inside of GitHub now at the technotes-api. There it is, and now we should be able to find it inside of our render.com account when we click new. So let's click new, and now this will be a web service. This is going to be a Node.js REST API. And you can see we have technotes-api available right here, so we will connect. And now let's provide a name here, and I will just say technotes-api as well. Looks like the Node environment, that seems fine. Your region may be different than mine. The branch will be main. And now we have a build command to put in. And for our node project here, this will be npm install. So this will install all of the dependencies that, is, that are needed. And then we have a script here. And instead of saying node server JS, we can just say npm start because we have the start script in our package JSON. From there, let's scroll down and you can see it has the current free plan highlighted and that's exactly what we want. So let's just create a web service. Once we do this, we'll be able to enter in our environment variables. And so as this deploys, we can see it's in progress. Let's click environment over here and we can add environment variables. You could also browse to your .env file and they will accept it that way. But I'm going to add them over here. And there's one extra one that we need to add. And that is the node version that we want to use. So I'm going to say node underscore version. Here I'm going to put 16.16.0 because that's the one we're using. After that, we need to go ahead and paste in the other environment variables we have. And that includes the database URI. That also includes the access token secret. So I'll bring that over. And then we can add one more. And that is going to be the refresh token secret. Now I will go ahead and cut away to enter my values so you don't see those. And you can enter your values and come back. Okay, my values are now entered and I want to click save changes. And so those changes have now been saved. Let's look at the events tab here. And you can see the deployment is changed because the environment was updated. So this is the deploy we want to watch right here. So I'll click deploy. Once again, this takes a while. This takes longer than the React app on the front end. So we'll just want to watch this. And of course, you can watch the entire thing. I'm going to cut away and come back. Okay, I am back and it has completed. And we can see the last few messages and that did take several minutes. It says build successful, but even after that, it was deploying and then it detected the node version that we put in with the environment variable and it started the service with npm start. 
And then we start to see things that we would normally see in the console as well. So let's scroll back up and let's look at the log, which would be the console for Node.js. And you can see the last several messages were also logged here in this console. Okay, now that we've got that, you still might want to give it a minute or two after it says it is up and running to go ahead and propagate out everywhere. But then we could go ahead and right click and we should see our splash page that we created if we launch this. And right now we still don't have the CSS. And if I reload, there we go. We've got the CSS now. So it was just getting ready to share everything. I don't like that full white page. I like the darker page myself. Okay, so now we know our Tech Notes API is up and running, and that means our front end should now be ready to interact with MongoDB and the back end that we have. So let's hit the employee login, and we'll go ahead and enter in Dan D, our stakeholder, and I'll enter in his password. If you have a different user, you can do that. And I'm going to tab on down and say, trust this device as well and then sign in. We've got our spinner. I want to say never as far as saving the password for this, but everything looks like it's working as it should. Let's see if we can see the tech notes. We got those right away because we prefetched that data. We didn't even have to see a spinner to wait. That's great. Now we can see the edit note. It seems to be working fine. So let's go back to the user list. You can see Dave is inactive on the user list and it has a different color rather than active. And everything seems to be working good here as well. We went to that edit user page already. So that's great. We could, of course, enter in a new note or try a new user, all of those things. But we've tested that out already. We won't spend time on that during the video. Everything seems to be good for the application and it's nice and fast. I'm going to go ahead and log out, make sure that works too. Everything is good here. And with the deployment in place, we can bring up our user stories. I'm keeping track of this back in the front end code repository, by the way. And we have officially replaced the current sticky note system. And of course, we'd want to confirm that with our stakeholder. We did provide easy navigation and we had display current user and assigned role. That was in place for a little while already. We had notes can be deleted by managers or admins, and that was definitely true. We saw the trash can there available for Dan D. Anyone can create a note, and we had confirmed that with the employee account Joe that we had created. Uh, employees can only view and edit their assigned notes. That was true for Joe as well, but managers and admins can view edit, delete, do everything they should with the notes. And that is also true. Only managers and admins can see the user settings. So we could check that off. Only managers and admins can create new users. We can check that off. And desktop mode is most important. And that's essentially what we looked at with full screen, but it should be available in mobile. Let's go into Chrome and we've got the web app open. I'll open up DevTools and I need to click away. Yeah, Chrome has been a little buggy for me lately on the DevTools. I don't think that's anything to do with our app. Here we see it in an iPhone 6, 7, and 8. And now let's go ahead and look at maybe an iPad if it fits in there. Yes, it looks great there too. Let's check maybe just an iPhone 6. And of course the smallest would even be an SE. It looks like everything's fitting. Let's give one that's decent sized here. Let's get to 75% maybe. And then let's try the login. I'll once again, I'll log in as Mark, the manager. Sign in, we've got a little bit of a wait and now we're logged in and we can view the tech notes. And of course we don't see as many columns on the smaller mobile screen. After that, we can view, yes, we can edit the note. Let's go to users. The same here, everything looks good. There's our test user. Yes, everything is working and looking good in mobile. I think success, so we can go back and check off our last item. You might have noticed that I'm getting some console log messages as we run the app. And of course, when you deploy, you probably want to go through your code and remove all of those. I did not do that. And that's just because it's tutorial mode. I leave a lot of those things in there to help out viewers and students. But you probably would want to remove all of the console log statements and notes like that before you deploy your application as well. Hey, success, we have checked off all the user stories and our app is functioning for our stakeholder. That's great. Now, 
what happens usually after you deploy an app and you meet all of those expectations or hopefully do they will want additional features now don't just say okay and do those of course that's scope creep that makes the project continue to go on especially if you're a freelance developer you've given your bid and you have met every expectation along the way so you need to charge for those additional services don't sell yourself short and a couple of things I could think of that might be wanted one would be an archive for old tickets so that ticket list did not continue to grow and grow and you might want to be able to search that archive as well they might eventually want this to tie into some financial or billing software where they could bill each ticket directly from this application and then also they might want to save drafts of notes as they edit a note say their token expires it's been a week and they forgot to log back in during that week well they'll get a notice they won't be able to save that draft so that's something else I would suggest and you may think of many more things that you could add to this application again just remember to don't say okay and just add the extra features without charging more don't sell yourself short on your effort congratulations though you have completed the MERN stack project remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing you're helping my channel grow have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.